I, one of my teenagers came in and her head was bald. And she said, oh, her hair fell out and then she was bald. And guess what? We put her on this medicine I'm talking about. And once she took the medicine for at least a month, her hair started growing again. Wow. Yeah. Welcome back to Pediatrics to Go. So today we're talking about ringworm, otherwise called lapa lapa, as most Nigerians know it. So I'm Francisca, your host, and I'm going to hand over this show to Dr. Sanesi. She will enlighten us about everything we need to know about ringworm. So thank you, Francisca. Um, we're actually talking about ringworm today because a lot of children have it. and. There's uh, different types of, um, ringworm is actually um, an infection that's caused by fungus. Oh. And there's different types. Now we see uh, um, scalp ringworm, which we call tinea capitis, and then we see body ringworm. So anything that is outside of the scalp usually is uh, tinea corporis. And then when you have it, depending on where it's located, we have different names. If you have uh, athlete's foot, that's actually yeast infection of the of the feet. And a lot of people will have irritation, um, itching, sometimes swelling, uh, liquid coming out of the skin. And usually that is uh, athlete's foot. And then sometimes you can have jock itch where you have ringworm around the groin area. And it's very common in athletes. And that's why it's called jock itch. But the thing about um, ringworm, because it's a yeast infection, it actually, it can actually be um, quite hard to get rid of. And most times, if, if it's a bacterial infection, usually you give antibiotics 10 days, er everything goes away. But with yeast infections, it can take up to six to eight weeks to clear it up. Now, we're going to talk about ringworm on the scalp first because we see a lot of children coming in with scalp ringworm. Anytime we have scalp ringworm, it usually eats away at the hair follicles. So when you see a child with a rash, the reason it's called ringworm, it usually tends to be round. And when you see children with uh, scalp ringworm, that area usually has what we call black dot alopecia. And basically, it means hair loss because the ringworm is affecting the hair follicle and the hair falls out. Oh, yes. So if you see a child that has like scaly, uh, circular rashes on the scalp, the hair is gone, that's ringworm. Mm -hmm. And most times, the treatment for that is oral antifungal medicines because if you just put uh, Nizoral shampoo or any of these uh, common um, yeast uh, shampoos, anti-fungal anti shampoos, is not enough to get rid of the fungus that's in the hair follicles. Okay. So children have to be on oral um, anti-fungal anti medicines. Um, the commonest is, if you talk to your doctor, they'll let you know, usually we use griseofolvin, but there's other medicines, newer medicines that are available, but the commonest is this uh, anti-fungal medicine that I just mentioned. When children use that medicine, we usually tell them, check, follow up with your pediatrician within a month because we need to make sure that they're getting better. Plus, they need to get a blood test because that medicine can affect the liver. Wow. So they need to check their liver to make sure that there's no side effects from the medicine they're taking, especially if they're taking it for six to eight weeks. Now, you can also, I, I like using a topical shampoo. Um, we have a lot of over-the-counter shampoos like Selsun Blue Shampoo, Nizoral Shampoo. I like those um, antifungal shampoos because it helps to decrease the load of the fungus on the scalp. So you use it in addition to the oral medicine and usually you still have to treat for at least six to eight weeks. But in my experience, a lot of children get better sooner than later when they do both as opposed to just doing the oral medicine. And then I tell my patients, just leave the anti-fungal shampoo on the scalp, the areas where there's the ringworm, for a couple of minutes before you rinse it out. That, that way you can penetrate the scalp, the skin of the scalp, and it can actually help the child to start looking better sooner than later. Well, I've seen some people like use blades to scrape the surface. Is that, is that it's right? It's not necessary. Like I see them scraping it off like no, when it's healing. it's not necessary. Mm. If you give the oral medicine, it goes into the system and it gets into the blood uh, flow, the blood supply of the scalp and it gets in there and it kills the yeast inside. Scraping the top, if you, use the, um, if you use the antifungal shampoo, then you don't need to start scraping. That's, it's not medical, non-medical people would do that, mm. but it's not necessary. And sometimes you're scraping the scalp and you can end up last cutting and creating and opening 
uh, where there's yeast infection in there and they are introducing bacterial infection and okay. then that child might need to be on oral antibodies in, because you've introduced a bacterial infection from just scraping the skin and creating open openings in the skin that bacteria can go in and now multiply and there's no need for that. So just using the antifungal shampoo and taking the antifungal medicine, which is the grisofolvin, that's the first choice. There's others that people can use, but see your doctor and then they can decide which um, antifungal medicine is best for your child. So does ringworm cause any form of discomfort in the child? There's something called, um, well, there, when there's extensive ringworm in the scalp, it can actually cause like pus pockets and oozing of pus from the scalp yeah. because it removes the hair and then we, uh, children will have enlarged lymph nodes. These are the occipital lymph nodes at the back of the neck. Mm -hmm. And whenever we have an infection, the lymph node drains the area where the infection is. So the, the lymph nodes at the back of the neck will drain the, um, trying to kill the fungus, they'll start to drain. And then children start having oozing from their scalp and yellow pussy fluid. Sometimes it's like clear, clear fluid, like water, but golden water. And they are so, it's very, very itchy and children are like scratching at their scalp. It can be extremely uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So it's better to see your doctor and ask them if your child has ringworm, especially if there's hair loss. Mm -hmm. Always think about ringworm. And I, I even recommend, I, one of my teenagers came in and her head was bald. And she said, oh, her hair fell out and then she was bald. And guess what? We put her on this medicine I'm talking about. And once she took the medicine for at least a month, her hair started growing again. Oh, wow. So a lot of our women that have hair loss, maybe, when, when we wear all these um, uh, hair extensions, mm -hmm. wigs, and, and um, different types of hair types, sometimes yeast actually thrives in heat. Oh. And it's just, they're just like mushrooms. When it's mm -hmm. humid and hot, you see mushrooms growing in the grass. Yes. Yeast is like that. When there's heat and moisture, you combine both, especially if one is wearing a wig, and then they um, and they start to their lose, hair. And you start, and you, you keep that wig on, and you're not washing your hair regularly. The yeast, and there's different types of yeast. You know, you have all kinds of, there's different classes of yeast. Yeah. But the ones that get into the scalp and start to multiply, they multiply quicker when there's moisture sure. and, um, uh, and heat. Mm. So whenever, and that's why it's common in the feet. You're wearing shoes, For a long you know, time. socks. That's why we get athlete's foot. Mm. And then we also have it in the groin. A lot of people have a yeast infection of the groin where you have like this itchy rash mm. and it's all around the groin. And that, those are hot areas and they're also moist because people sweat a lot in those areas. Mm -hmm. So what we usually recommend for that is um, see a doctor, let them give you, put you on the right dose for the medicine. Remember in pediatrics, we always dose everything based on the weight of the child. Okay. And as long as the child is getting the right dose, usually you can take the medicine once a day or twice a day, depending on what your doctor prefers. But once a day, I like once a day because you don't miss the dose, especially if it's in the evening. And then you take it with food and just make sure that the child, your child is well hydrated when they're taking it. Now for the topical, anything else that is on the body, anytime we have ringworm on the body, it's usually a ring. You want to just use topical um, antifungal or yeast creams. And those usually work and those usually will go away in about two to four weeks. Uh -huh. So you treat for as long as you need to. And usually the medicine is twice a day. I ask your doctor, they'll tell you the best medicine to use. Now, if there's um, infection of the uh, toenails, okay. those are sometimes you see women with uh, discolored toenails, mm -hmm. which are like dark uh, gray or even like brownish. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes women have holes in their uh, toes from yeast infections. Wow. And guess why? Manicures and pedicures. Mm -hmm. So what I recommend, I, I recommend to people, first of all, when children are going to get their haircuts at the barbers, have their own clippers mm -hmm. so that they can take it and so that the barber is not using the clippers they use for everybody else. Because when and you do that, it sterilize. Yeah, sometimes it's not sterilized. When you do that, that minimizes the exposure of your child's scalp to yeast infections from other customers. Mm -hmm. And then for women, when you're going to get your nails done, mm -hmm. I recommend taking your um, nail, your manicure set pedicure and pedicure set. set. Yeah. I, you know, when I go to do my nails, I always have my pedicure <laughs> set, uh, set in my bag, and then I'm like, no, don't use anything else. Use mine, and that's that helps to minimize. Uh, transmission of yeast from one customer to the so other, that, yeah. especially in public places. And if you notice that your nails are discolored, that's a, uh, um, that's a different uh, yeast infection. Sometimes you might also need oral um, antifungals for that. So scalp and nails, usually we do oral yeast um, treatments. And then for anything on the body, we usually use topical creams. And sometimes we, if it's very itchy, like if you have a, a yeast 
infection that's itchy. Sometimes we can do a combination of steroids. Steroids help to decrease inflammation from the yeast. Okay. And then the antifungal kills the yeast. Wow. So I'm not going to say what works best because depending on where you are, whatever country you are in the world, there's anti, uh, antifungal medicines available. Okay. Talk to your doctor and they'll be able to give you the best. But that's really what... Uh, now, um, yeast infections are very contagious. Really? So a child that is in a classroom and everybody has these, or he takes his friend's hat and put it on, you can actually get it, yes, because they are spores. spores. You can get ringworm from that. And what we recommend is, um, once you see it, so that it doesn't get worse, just see your pediatrician or your doctor and then they can take care of it. But it's one of the most common skin infections we see in children and adults too. Mm -hmm. And um, it needs to be treated. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Sanasi. Right. So if you've gotten to this point in this video and you're yet to subscribe to the channel, please do subscribe and share to your friends and family so they can be enlightened about pediatric information today. So until next time, thank you. Bye. Bye.